Guys, so listen, the UFC has these 40 shows per year, right? Uh, across the 52 weeks on the calendar, and a lot of them get buried in the shuffle. And so because of that, I always notice that we have to turn on the Jets on fight week and just all of a sudden get excited that the countdown shows, they rarely get any love from my circles. No, no one really talks about it. Uh, even the embedded, some people don't even watch them all. Oh, I caught number three and six, and so who knows? Um, now we got this virtual face-off between Ilya Taporia and Max Holloway, a good solid two weeks before the event, and it's gotten a little bit of buzz, right? So with the UFC going back, you know, to an old school, an old reliable in the combat sports world of the face-off, what are your guys' thoughts? Did you like them? And who won? We'll go back to Danny Segura to lead off. I liked it. I think the UFC needs to do more of these and even just go back to what they used to do and, and, and do them in person. I don't know why my algorithm on Instagram has been throwing me some old Conor McGregor and Jose Aldo clips from that uh, world tour that they did. They need to do more of that. And again, I understand, as you mentioned, Gigi, that uh, there's tons of shows nowadays and it's really hard to get some promotional muscle just because they have so many things to promote. But at least for their pay-per-view events, which are, what, 13 a year, 12 a year, whatever the number is, um, I, I would like to see a little bit more more emphasis. And, and this was great. We saw some sides from both Holloway and, and Topuria that we haven't seen before. I, th I think this rivalry is heating up a little bit, and it got me excited. Uh, certainly, there's mutual respect, but there's also a certain level of of uh, dislike for each other, perhaps. And that's something we haven't really seen Holloway uh, in in a while, right? Like, Holloway's usually a pretty laid-back dude. He gets along with everyone. Everyone respects him, a legend. You don't really see much trash talk just because, like, whoever he's fighting is always super respectful towards him. But finally, we get somebody to kind of poke at him a little bit, and we're getting a little bit of, of, uh, of a different side of Holloway, which I've been enjoying. So I'm all in for this. Um, if I had to give a score, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Ilya here, I think. I think he got the better of, of some of those exchanges. I, I really do think he pissed off Holloway with the BMF belt. Like, I, I think he he got what he wanted, right? Um, which was get some emotion out of Holloway. So, yeah, I, I'm all for these. I think the UFC should do more, and hopefully that's that's the case in the future. Matt, do you agree? 10-9 for Toporia, or did you go the other way? Uh, yeah, I think so. But, I mean, it was fun. It was it was a, a good back-and-forth banner. Um, like Danny said, I do like these sort of uh, virtual face-off things. I wish they do, you know, go down this road, go down this road in the future. But I, as long as it works for the guys that are involved, the guys and gals that may be involved, you know, if they're going to get get into the back and forth trash talk, then yeah, definitely do these. If if it's going to be kind of a thing where both people are super respectful, then we can do without. Um, but it works here. And um, I, I liked a few things that Topuria did. Um, you know, he was trying to get under under Max's skin with some of the words that he was saying, brought out the BMF belt, you know. <laughs> um, but Max had some good lines as well, even though they were a little subtle. You know, the donuts and churros line, I don't th I think went over a lot of people's heads. Um, donuts representing the zero, the one being the one lost in the shape of a churro thing. Yeah, um, it kind of went over my head at first, to be honest with you. But yeah, I, I think it was very cool. And I, I do want to see these more often. Well, it went over my head, too. I thought I had to do something with uh, Mexican policemen or something. But anyway, uh, Ghost, how about you? How'd you score it? I don't think a donut or churros ever made it past my head, bro. I love those things. <laughs> um, look, I thought uh, I thought Taporio won. I love when they do these things, except I'm kind of with Danny. I think Danny was the one that said this. Try and do them in person. You know, when you have two people in different locations, the streaming era, the delay, it's a little bit rougher to watch i like when they have two stools or you know in boxing they'll, they'll it almost looks like they have them in that police uh room where they're asking them questions um i like that a little better um uh, but i i would rather them do this than nothing uh but i felt like tapoya got under max's skin a little bit max was a, i don't know that this is really his thing that environment that type because he just seemed annoyed that he would even be asked any of these types of questions which doesn't mm -hmm. make much sense considering what you're doing you have to know that these things are going to come up but overall I, I would rather them do this than not do it i think they should do it like matt said as long as the two fighters involved are going to have something to say do it every time i mean there's fights every weekend there's so many reasons for us to forget what's going on with all these cards you have to give us reasons to want to watch and this this does that especially with the more casual fan yeah 
Uh, I liked it as well, and I I think you guys are right. 10-9 to Poria, because he's standing behind, hey, I'm undefeated and I'm the current champ. But I did like the line of Holloway, you know, hey, you're a fan of me. Kind of like, I barely know who you are, whereas you're a fan of me. You sat on your couch on Saturdays and cheered for me. And I also liked the appearance of Holloway just had kind of like, what am I doing here? I just had the most epic KO of the year. You know, I am the BMF. I'm a former champ with title defense. I'm in the Hall of Fame. I'm cemented. I'm I'm hooking you up, you know, by, by even being here. He kind of had a little bit of that vibe. So I thought it was a close 10-9. I was hoping one of you guys would maybe see it that way, or maybe I'm reading too much into it. But I, I thought it was cool. And, okay, and I think we all agree, in person's probably the best. And usually for these yeah. pay-per-views, don't they fly out the fighters when they announce a ticket sale? So I'm sure at some point, have Tapori and Holloway been in the Middle East together? Because that's where I would have done it. Now, if they didn't travel to get there to do it, then I get it. But I remember Duplessis and Adesanya did promotion mm -hmm. in Australia. And then they flew home, and then they flew back to the event. That's what I would love to see and see it in person. All right, here's another one. I'm going to throw a curveball at you guys here. Oh. Did you guys like Fitzgerald in the role? Um, and if you didn't, would you give him a pass to at least try it in person? Because he's kind of a quiet, stoic guy, a professional. But sometimes I feel like a DC, a Bisping, a Dan Hardy, somebody can be there to amp things up a little bit and poke, you know? Uh, Goes, you go first. Well, I think situations like this, uh, you definitely want to have your questions all scripted out, right? And I love that he was able to pick up on the BMF belt and alter that. I thought he did a good job in that sense, but... It's just so difficult, man, with, with the delay and guys talking over each other. I would say give him a pass and let him do it in person, but I didn't think he was so bad. How about you, Matt? I think he did a good job because he wasn't reacting. Like when Topuria started getting animated, like he mm. didn't react. He stayed he stayed in his in his lane, and then he would just throw it back to Max. I think he did a really good job moderating it. Danny? Yeah, Sam, I think he, he did a good job. But I think you also bring a great point. I think getting like a DC in there, somebody that will probably go like, ooh, you know, once a this is thrown or something in there, um, that could definitely, you know, spice things up a bit. But yeah, it, it was a good job. And uh, all in all, I, I really enjoyed that that segment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hope they do more of it. And like I said, look, years ago, UFC 24, right? From 24 to 25 it was like two months. And you could zero in on every angle, every matchup. You could break it down with your friends. Like there was this whole big lead up. And now it's like, you know, it's over and it's like, okay, the next week, the next week, the next week. And it's, you know, and then all of a sudden you just have to get out of that, you know, mind frame and, and focus on the new set. So I like that this jarred things up a little bit and hopefully we see uh, some more of it. Any, any highlights from the 20 minutes, Danny, that stood out to you that maybe others didn't pick up on that you liked? I thought it, a couple of things were hilarious that uh, Max was making fun of Ilya's drill where he hits the mitts and Ilya <laughs> thought he was saying Joe. So he said, who's Joe? And it was just like a really, really funny moment. It was something from like the office or something. It, it was really <laughs> hilarious. Uh, and another, which I think that this was a big deciding factor for me, the fact that like Max was kind of making fun of like, you know, Ilias Topuria's English not being all that great, but it's like the guy just called him out. Dude, this is like my fourth language. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> you want to do this in Spanish? Because, uh, you know, we can do that if you want. Uh, I thought that was a great comeback from him. Uh, so, uh, yeah, those are two two things that stood out for me. How about you, Matt? Anything else that stood out to you from uh, the 20 minutes? Yeah, my biggest my biggest takeaway from this whole thing was the fact that Topuria challenged Max Holloway to a Justin Gaethje-like, you know, standoff in the middle of the cage. So mm. let's meet in the middle and throw down. And he was like, I guarantee you, like, you're going to sleep if you do that. So I thought that was probably like the spiciest moment of the whole thing. Um, because as you were talking about earlier, you, you, you mentioned that, that fight, that Gaethje fight. I mm. mean, could you imagine like if that actually happens <laughs> between Soporia and Holloway? I mean, goodness. There's crazy. a bit of a gentleman's bet right there, right? Like, yeah. It's a lot more than just winning the belt, but like, okay, like live up, like live up to your word. They're saying a lot of things now, so um, yeah, that that'd be very interesting if they were if they were to do this and and throw it down. Oof, fireworks. Mm -hmm. Goes. What do you think of uh, Diego Lopez as the backup fighter? He's been announced for this fight. Uh, the the alternate, you know, in case one of them were to have an issue with their health or making weight. I like it. I think it makes sense. Um, it's probably going to be the easiest payday of all time because considering these two guys, like I don't think there's very much that can keep them 
out of this fight. They they both tend to show up and they seem like they both really want this fight. So Diego Lopez can probably chill and just make some money. But overall, I think it's it's the right choice. Yeah, I feel bad for like a Mozart Evloev who's undefeated overall, undefeated in the UFC, and mm-hmm. they just leapfrog over him. So that's a message he better be exciting against Aljamain Sterling because the UFC is being a lot more clear in their messaging as far as like what we're looking for. Danny, you got an early prediction for me on this fight? I'm going with Topuria. I'm going with Topuria on this one, but boy, this is a tough fight. I, I do think that Holloway... He's a bit up there in age. He does have a lot of mileage, and his last fight was at 155. I do wonder what that return to 145 looks like. I feel like the last few fights we saw him in the weight class, he looked pretty drained. He, you know, he looked like he struggled a bit. So I wonder if if one trip to 155 kind of could have spoiled that uh, return back. So I'm gonna go with Topuria here, but dude, uh, your your guess is as good as mine. This is a very close fight. Well, you did clarify, but I wouldn't say he's up there in age. I could have sworn he's still like 31 or 32, but he is up there in mileage. And I think, yeah, Uh, well, I think he's like 33 now. Oh, is he? Um, I may may be mistaken, but let me me pull that up on Google. (laughs) All right. While you do that, Matt, give me your prediction. Man, uh, it's hard for me to bet against or, you know, pick against Holloway. It's it's super hard. I think he's, I think his range is going to be a big factor in this fight. I mean, obviously, Topuri is going to bring the power and the, the, you know, the, aggression aggression but i think max is just really really sharp he's really slick um i could see a fight where he ends up you know just leaning behind that jab and sticking and moving and really just picking him apart for the course of five rounds if it even if it goes a distance mm-hmm. holloway by the way uh 32 turning 33 in december topuria just 27 man he's he's in the very prime of his he career prime. goes who do you lean on lean towards uh, right now, I'm leaning towards Holloway for a lot of the reasons that these guys pointed out. The the range, I think, is a big deal. You know, a lot of Tapuria's damage is done on the inside. If he can get in the inside, kind of like Volkanovski did, if he follows that game plan, I could see him doing it. But the thing is, can he do it over five rounds? I don't know. I think there's too many question marks still. So I'm kind of leaning towards Holloway. But towards the end, I have a feeling I'm going to be penciling to Tapuria. You know, we're co- we're covering the stand-up appeal of this fight, right? But man, Topoi is a really good grappler, too. Yes. Now, the thing is, can he get it there? Mm-hmm. So uh, Holloway's not the easiest guy to take down nor keep down. And again, the mind games, I think, is going to center around BMF. You see a belt. You know, you see them talking about the gentleman's agreement. And that I do lean towards a little bit from Holloway. But we still got two weeks. Uh, Topuria is not an idiot either, so we'll see. You know, a fight's a fight, and the the main thing is to get your hand raised and move on, right? Uh, it's it's not like I don't think you lose any bravado by not just electing the stand, but we'll see. Uh, I think my heart's with Holloway on this one. 